Hello and welcome back to Meet City Gaming. JD here with another episode of Kicking Aces here in World of Tanks. And I've got a special episode for you today. It's one of my absolute best games I've had in the game to date. One of my highest base XP games. And it comes in a tank that I have not highlighted on the channel yet. This is the AMX 1390, the tier 8 French medium tank with an auto loading gun. So we're going to go through the battle as usual and then I'm going to have a bit of a discussion about a topic at the end of the battle during the post battle results. So feel free to stick around for that and, uh, and chime in with your opinions on that subject when we get to it as well. I'm going to go into to something that I want to talk about and, and my thoughts on it and I'm looking for uh, thoughts and opinions of other players out there as well. So stick around for that. But for right now we are in the AMX 1390. I have recently unlocked this tank from the AMX 1375 and in this battle I do not yet have the top gun, the 90 millimeter gun. I'm still using the 75 millimeter. And so this is actually the last battle in the tank before I unlock the gun. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about the, the two guns on the tank. Uh, this isn't gonna be quite a full tank review, but just in the early part of the battle here while there's some positioning and spotting and, and whatnot going on. So the, the 75 millimeter gun is a six shot. It's the same gun basically as the AMX 1375. Uh, what's good about it is that it, you can quickly put out the damage and the clip reloads fairly quickly. Uh, here we can see the AMX 1375 I have spotted. We put in uh, one shot into his tracks and the second shot does some damage and then he pulls back. So here you can see I go for a reload and 14 seconds give or take is about the reload for a full clip in this tank. So you can put out some damage. I think a clip potential is around 700, uh, maybe, maybe eight. Um, or up to nine if, if, you, if you're rolling high, and then 14, 15 seconds and you're fully reloaded. With the 90 millimeter gun, the damage potential is great. You're doing 250 average damage per shot, four, six shots, uh, but the reload on it goes way up. It's, uh, it's almost a full 40 seconds, depending on your loadout again. But the damage that you can dish out in a very short time with that clip is, is so high that uh, it, it's definitely worth it to do the upgraded gun. I've played a couple rounds in it, and the tank feels so much more powerful. It's such a deadly assassin in the uh, in the late game with that 90 millimeter gun. But even with the 75 millimeter, it's not bad. You're you're gonna get into tier 10 matches, and you're gonna struggle if you do to to penetrate. Um, but anything other than a tier 10, anything other than a very heavily armored tank, you can flank the speed and maneuverability of this tank is awesome. You can get their flanks, their rears, dump your entire clip, do some big damage, and then try to get out of there while you're reloading, and you only have to avoid them for, again, 14 seconds, and then you're ready to go. So, we've pushed to the uh, the north. We started in the south spawn, and we pushed up the one line, the rail line, to try and do a little early spotting and a little early helping out, but uh, that's not a great spot for me to be in at this point, because all my allies are there, they're trading shots, and I just don't have any uh, effective fire. So, I come back to the base because I see there are some enemies sneaking in behind our lines here, and I get one nice little shot into the uh, the IS, I think it was an IS-3, uh, Russian heavy tank, and as he was cresting through the, the little opening there. And we're going to look for another shot before I go for a reload. You can see there's two or three that have kind of worked their way up this valley. And what I want to do, what this tank does best, is support. You want to find a tank that's engaged with somebody else looking in another direction, swoop in, dump your clip, and then either get out or avoid fire for the, the 14 seconds to reload. So... We go for reload now because I'm shifting and I don't have any shots on anybody. I want my clip fully loaded. And again, I'm assessing the battlefield here. There's an M103 down there. Not something I want to engage head on by myself, but definitely a good target if I can just provide some assistance. So I think this is where the big fight's going to be. Our allies uh, outnumber them to the north, but down here, this is a pretty even fight and we may even be outnumbered here. So we need to defend this flank, hold off the base here from being captured. And then if our allies clean up up north, we'll have this battle. So here we can see the Alf Clarung's Panzer Panther, the Awful Panther, uh, which I've done a lot of videos on recently and finished the grind for. I put one in, and I'm just shooting at the top of his turret. One of the struggles for this tank is its aim time and its accuracy. Here we go, we have the side of a T-28. We get another shot in there, and then Ally finishes him off. The aim time and the accuracy on this gun, it's not great, and when you get the, the 90 millimeter, it, it doesn't get any better, and it, it probably gets a little worse. It, it feels slow. You don't want to be sniping, you want to be brawling. You want to be right up next to these guys on their sides, on their rear, so that you can dump your clip without having to worry about aiming. So now, here we go for it. Okay, the M103 is looking the other way. We come in, and we've got his side, and we're just pumping in the damage here. You can see about 135 uh, average damage per shot. 
and there's our last shot. Just like that, we've dumped six shots into this guy. He's on fire, and now we can play a little uh, ring around the rosy, traverse him, and his turret cannot keep up, especially while he's on fire, which slows down the turret traverse as well as everything else about the tank, and the ally comes in to help us finish him off. And now we're already reloaded, just like that, and we've got the uh, Chinese light tank here, the WZ-132, and we aim that last shot just right. We put it as far to the right as we could without intercepting the rock, and thankfully, the shot traveled straight, and the tank that was uh, with our enemy that was trying to hide there could not quite get behind the rock before the shot went into his side. So once again, we're going to shift, and while we're shifting, we're going to reload and, uh, and try to have a full clip for our next engagement. So we can see the scores are pretty well, uh, are doing pretty well. We're up 9 to 5. Um, again, it looks like our allies have met some resistance up north there. It looks like that battle's kind of a standstill. We might be losing it a little bit, but we cleaned up the southern engagement, and so we are now on the way. The cavalry is on the road to, to help out. So we're moving along here at a really good clip. You can get a feel for the mobility of this tank. It's really, really good. Uh, definitely, this is, the, this is the highlight stage of the game for this tank. When you're up, the enemy's engaged on another flank, and you're coming in to clean up. You can dump a lot of damage really quickly. So I see the artillery. That's a possible target. But I also see the tank destroyer here. That's a Stuart Emil. Tier 7 German turretless tank destroyer. He takes out one of our allies. I know I have a little bit of time to get here before he reloads. I wait till I have a clear shot, put it in, and now I've got five left, and oh my. Here's the AMX 1375. We put in two. We put in three. We put in four. What is he doing? He's not really looking at us. We set him on fire. The fire goes out. That looked like an automatic fire extinguisher, or he was really quick with his own fire extinguisher. We're reloading. And he's not firing at us. So is his clip empty too? I think so. I think he was not fully loaded there. And we've reloaded. He has not. And we, oof, we missed our first shot there. But the second one goes in, and he's removed from the game. So... That was a great engagement. Uh, thankfully, I think his clip was was not fully loaded. He made a couple mistakes, and the fast reload of our uh, clip was was able to finish him off with that last hit that we needed. So we're up to three kills. We have 29 damaging hits in, and there's two tanks left. There's a heavy tank and an artillery. So we're going to come up, try to get a little more cleanup done, and see if we can really, really push this game from a good game into a great game. And as we crest the ridge there, we see the French... Um, Artillery piece, the Lorraine, I think it was a 155.50. One shot is all that we need to remove that tank, and now there's just one left. And we can see he's taking hits from our allies, and it's an ST1, or an STI. Tier 9 Russian heavy tank, really, really well armored tank. I went for a reload, and it might have been premature, because I'm, now I'm waiting for the reload when I could be getting in here. Uh, I think I wanted to be fully loaded. I didn't realize that this guy was on such low health. So we look at the turret. The side of the turret on that thing is really well armored. So that was kind of a wasted shot, but I wanted to see if it would go through, uh, and it certainly didn't, so we know that that's no good. So we're going to try and go for the uh, the rear of the tank. He's a one hit, our allies have put a shot in, and we get a flush shot into the side of his hull. Takes him out for our fifth kill of the game, and what an awesome result for the AMX 1390. So a quick look at the post-battle results. Look at those totals, 3,302 damage in a tier 8 medium tank. 5 kills, 200 assistance damage, 23 penetrating hits, we had some fire ticks as well, 77,000 credits, 3,725 XP, and a first class mastery badge. And that's what I want to talk about for a little bit. I don't want to whine or complain, I just want to bring something up for discussion, get uh, other people's thoughts on this. I know for a long time, we'll, we'll see what the base XP for this game was in a minute, uh, I know for a while the, the trend was... Mastery badges would get reset when there was some kind of update to the game. And it was a little bit broken. I, that's, I'm completely on board with that. If you got logged on the, the day of a server reset, you could put up an ace tanker, a mastery badge, with a 1200 XP game. And that, that didn't feel right. That felt like it was, it was a cheapened way uh, of securing the ace tankers. But, you know, I've been playing since beta, and to me, I have a pretty good feel for, for what an ace tanker game should be. Um, I'm certainly not a unicorn. I'm not racking these things up all the time, but I have my fair share of them throughout the grinds that I've, that I've done in these tanks since the beta. And, and you can see here, base XP for this game, 1,772. That, to me, that's a mastery. That's an ace tanker. Um, in my gut, what I feel like the, the range for an ace tanker was up until this point, if you were in a bad tank, uh, high 1,500s could get you there. Not, not guaranteed, not always, but if high 1590 uh, base XP, you, you might get an ace tanker. 1600, 
yeah, you had a good chance. High 1600s, that was always an ace tanker. And if you had 1700 or above, it was always an ace tanker. As far as I know, you know, six months ago, if you put up a 1700 base XP game in any tank that I'm aware of, other than maybe the super high, you know, Waffentrager E100s or super OP tanks, uh, you were getting an ace tanker. So to put up a 1772 and get a first class was a real surprise for me. Um, you know, I'm thrilled with the result, and I don't really care. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it that this wasn't an ace tanker. But I'm curious. They've We know that Wargaming has fixed the server reset causing masteries to reset issue. But I'm wondering if they've made made it more difficult. I don't think people have just gotten better and the, the average is higher on its own. Maybe that's the case. But I'm wondering if something, when they change the way that the masteries didn't reset with the server, if they change something else, if now the calculation is different. I think it's supposed to be a moving average. You look at the last two weeks of games in the tank you're playing, and that average is the average that you're trying to beat. Uh, if you're better than 99% of those games that have taken place in that tank for the last two weeks, then you get the ace tanker. But I can't imagine that there were 1% of the games in the last two weeks in this tank were better than that one. Certainly there were some that would be better, but that many? I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. Um, so let me know what you think. If you've been playing the game for a while, do ace tankers feel different? Do it, does it feel like the, the bar has moved and that it's gotten a little more difficult? Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any further insights into this. I'm curious what people's thoughts are on this. Again, not a big deal. This isn't game breaking or anything, but just a curiosity that I've noticed. I have a, a bunch of other games recently in the 1600s that I thought would be ace tankers and haven't turned out to be. So it, it prompted me, especially when I saw this one, this was the best of the bunch, the highest base XP, uh, and it didn't turn out to be a mastery badge. So that one really made me start thinking, wanted to post this video, show the good game. Hopefully it was an entertaining one as well, but I wanted to bring up this issue for discussion. So a uh, quick look, we can see 31 shots fired, 24 direct hits and 23 penetrations. Great performance from the gun, great performance from the mobility of the tank. Boy, just imagine if I was firing the 90 millimeter and put that many shots in, how high that damage total would have been. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it'll stimulate a little conversation. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.